Hey everyone, we are on part three, the most important part of this video series on Azure Container Apps. And today I'm so excited to share with you managing access and identity with Azure Container Apps. This is part three. We've already covered security best practices. We went through implementing network security. We had some incredible demos that we showcased. And now we're going to go through managed managing access and identity with Azure Entry ID. Now, to do this, I started with a very simple design pattern. I had a container app that was running in Azure. And then I wanted to get a token to speak to Microsoft Graph to look me up, my profile that I was logged up on there also located in Azure. But what I did is I built it all. So you can see here, we have the start of the uh, use case here. So the user there requests access, protected access, goes into the container app, serves login or welcome page from index.html, then goes back, renders it, redirects to the Azure Entry ID login, enter your credentials, or if you've got a token locally on your uh, desktop, it will use that token, authenticate the user, redirects back, returns with the auth code, you get a token then, so you, you are authorized by uh, Active Directory, you get that and you validate the, the token, and then you establish that session and you pop it into a cookie. Now, once I've got that, I'm already authenticated to do certain things because I've set up my authorization to allow me to read the Microsoft graph of my own profile. So I get the access token for the me, <laughs> uh, forward slash me, and then I return the user profile, I populate with those user details, and then I render the profile page. All the time I can access protected resources because I've got a cookie, a valid JWT token in my browser's history. So ex exactly, you know, what does this look like with all of this nice little code here? So what it looks like, and I've got a little video, a screencast of this though. So I'm gonna log in with Entra ID here. It's already got my uh, details though. And it just retrieves that information. So you can also log out though. So the biggest hassle that I had was on the code level, having to write a lot of that authorization myself. So if you go into the code and I'm supplied all of those Git repos for you, you'll see there that the first thing we have to do is I'm using Spring Security. I have to go in and I have to annotate my, um, my code there. So you've got configuration, enable web security, and then I have to set up a security filter chain. I have to go in, okay, cool, uh, where and what is authorized, what isn't and uh, allowed. And then I have to go in there and go, okay, cool, go, go get their login details or, and, and go authenticate or um, uh, challenge them, say, listen, who are you and what you want uh, out of me? And then you're gonna return that though. Once I have that, I can go in there and I can say, wow, on my Java, this is using family. If I can go, are you authorized? If not, send them back, send them back to where they came from. If it is authorized, then go into the profile change now. In the background of doing all of this, I created something called a service principle. Now, the service principle is an old school way of saying, okay, cool, you need the client ID, client secret, and the tenant ID. A little bit cumbersome, I'm gonna show you how to do it in the new school way though. Once I have that, then I have to go cumbersomely go in to the API permissions. You can see there, there's my app registration. I registered the app then. And then I go, okay, API permissions, go set up all my permissions to be able to read MS Graph. I've got the open ID, I've got the profile, I've got the user read. It's a bit of a cumbersome thing. And if you go into the repo, you see there's a lot of scripts around it though. So when we go into the permissions, you know, that, that is, you can see there the enterprise application, those are the actual permissions we get then. And then you can also see each one of those permissions is actually a, a service principle. But wait, Rory, um, you said that there was an easier way to do this though. Now, when you actually go into the user service, you'll see there, interestingly enough, you can get access token for Microsoft Graph API, but, but a tokenization, a token, is just a service principle, is also, yeah, you, you're smelling what I'm selling here, is a managed identity. Because there is a much easier way to do that. Surely there's a better way. Now the easiest way to do that is just to go in, to create a managed identity, and we touched on managed identity in the previous videos when we did the uh, Azure OpenAI service and the, the uh, 
the design pattern called Modern Web App. Um, and then all you have to do there is you just go in there, managed identity, and it's got everything aligned. It. You can just go cognitive services, and you've got all of those predefined permissions that you want. So what happens about our, uh, our app? All we have to do is go in there, create a managed identity, and go graph owner. Yeah. And then once you have that, you, you import the managed identity credential builder and part of the Azure SDK. And all you have to do there is go at bean and you go new managed identity credential builder. No secrets to manage, no service principles. Azure injects the credentials securely at runtime. The uh, Azure container apps streamline for managed identities and automatic rotation. You don't have to worry about security issues there and no lingering app registrations or forgotten secrets. So I've got this example for you, ready for you. You can go to aka.ms forward slash spring dash Azure uh, dash container apps. It's got the end to end entry example, along with the e example of how to actually pull that profile from your graph. And once you have that, now you can see it's really done with managed identities. Going back to the, the other weeks here, we've got the sample here that goes in, uses managed identities, pulls out, and you can go chat with some of your services here. So in conclusion, you want to use layered security. You saw all those different layers, though. You want to make sure you use um, Azure Entra ID to go in there and layer it correctly and make sure you've got everything done. But you also want to do Entra ID to simplify it and then prefer managed identity. So once you have managed identities with Entra ID, you've got authorization and authentication. You can use role-based access control with the predefined roles and usage. If you want to roll your own, you can use user managed identities also though, but we have everything for anyone. Now, I don't want to forget to remind you to please go in there and check out our ref cards on uh, Java containerization and deployment. Also go check on the actual documentation on the Microsoft Learn. And then if you haven't done it, why haven't you registered for JDConf? We've got nearly 7,000 people who have registered for the uh, main Java conference that we're going to do meeting. I'm going to be hosting there also, though. So get onto that. And as before, look out for more events in this series. Cheers, everyone.